middle and high schoolers with their peers in a fun and high energy environment where they can learn and grow together every Sunday at 11 a.m. Join the movement and thrive with us. Get ready for Success Fest 2024, sponsored by Thrive Youth Ministry on Saturday, April 20th at 9 a.m. Middle and high schoolers, bring your friends and family to this fun, exciting, and interactive event on entrepreneurship, financial literacy, and workshops that engage young people in a way that responds to their needs and experiences. This is a free event, but registration is required, and a continental breakfast will be provided. Register now using the mobile app or online at truthrevealed.org. New members classes are still in session. Email connect at truthrevealed.org for the schedule of classes and how to get started. Communion and baptism will be observed next Sunday, April 7th. We will also acknowledge new members who have completed all orientation classes. Well, it's been 29 years of ministry here at Truth Reveal. And this year's theme is divine order. This is the year where we celebrate and apply the theme to our lives. We're getting ready for our church anniversary. It will take place April the 7th, the weekend of April the 7th, 2024. On that Saturday, the 6th, we will meet here in the sanctuary for our leadership intensive. I want all leaders to make sure you check your emails for correspondence from my office. CNP will lead the way. I just want you to know that I love you and appreciate you and thank you for the support and the participation for 29 years. Bishop Kimball is going to be Bishop Ronald Kimball from the Life Center Church in Eatonville. He will be our guest speaker for that Sunday. And I want you to get ready for it. Please call, text a friend, bring somebody to the meeting. It's going to be a celebration all weekend long and for the entire year. Remember, this is the year of divine order. And I'll see you at the conference. We thank you for your continued generosity to Truth Revealed and for celebrating the resurrection with us. Let's lift up Jesus on this glorious day. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody. Sing praises to our King. Sing praises for God is the great and awesome King of all the earth. And let his people sing praises. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns forever and ever. Yes, our God reigns. Yeah, sing it with me, say. Our God is an awesome God. And He reigns, he reigns forever and ever. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is a holy God. He reigns forever and ever. He is a holy God. And He reigns forever and is joyful. Our God is a holy God. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is a holy God.
From the love of Christ shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword but we ought to know that in all these things we are more than conquerors because he loved us because he loved, he's a good good father oh we thank you come on y'all ought to open up your mouth and put something in that atmosphere hallelujah hallelujah come on our God is good father you are awesome and we adore you we are grateful and we are thankful for your love come on put something in the atmosphere come on we are not waiting on a song anymore but we're gonna worship my prayer said let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in our sight you are our Lord and our Redeemer come on he's a good good father and he's the best one Come on, you're the best one. Woo! You're a good, good father. You're a good, good father. You're a good, good father. Yes, you are. And you're the best one. Yes, you're the best one. Yes, you're the best one. Yes, the best one. Yeah. I've heard thousand stories of what they think you're like but I've heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone you're a good good father to you are that's who you are that's who you are and I love by you that's who I am that's who I am that's who I am come on oh and I've seen, oh, and I've seen many searching many searching for it. Far and wide, but I come on. Know we're all searching, we're all searching for answers. Only you come on, because Jesus, you're the answer. Just what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. I'm loved by you, yes, and I'm loved by you. That's who I am. That's who I am. That's who I am. That's who I am. You're a good, good father. That's who you are.
God, you are perfect in all of your ways to us. Come on, lift your voice and say, you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect, Lord. You are perfect, Lord. love so undeniable I I can hardly speak so unexplainable I I can hardly think as you call me deeper still as you call Deeper still as you call me, deeper still into love. love. Come on, you're a good, good father. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. That's who you are. And I'm loved by you. That's who I am. Oh God, that's who I am. That's, who I am. that's my identity. Best one, you and I'm loved by you. That's who I am. That's who I am. That's who I am. Who I am. Who I am. Oh, how he loves us so. Oh, how he loves us. How he loves us so. Come on, lift your voice and sing. Oh, 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 oh. How, how he loves us so. Oh, how he loves us. Oh. portion and he is our prize drawn to redemption by the grace in his eyes his grace is an ocean we're all sinking so heaven meets earth like an unforeseen kiss and my heart turns violently inside of my chest and I don't have time to maintain my regrets when I think about the way he loves Come on, us. sing oh how. oh how he loves us. Oh how, oh, how yeah. he loves us. Oh, oh how, how he loves us. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Jesus loves me. Lift it up. Yes. Jesus loves me. So what the Bible. The Bible tells me so. Sing it again. Sing yes, Jesus loves yes, me. Jesus loves me. Sing yes. yes Jesus loves me. Sing yes. And oh, how he loves us, oh, oh, how he loves us, how he loves us, so oh. lift your voice and sing, oh, oh, how, how he loves us, oh, good good father you, that's who you are who you are and i'm loved by you it's who i am it's my identity you're a good good father who you are Perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways to us. Lift your voice and worship. Say, you are perfect in all of your ways. Perfect in all of your ways. Perfect in all of God, your ways. God, you're perfect in all your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To your ways faithful in all of your ways God you're faithful in all your ways faithful in all of your ways Best one, it's who you are. You're the best one, it's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. It's who I am. about a good father 
think about her progenitor, the seed carrier, the caring father, Thank you, Lord. the protector, the guard, the visionary, the one who loves endlessly, the one who supports, the one who provides one that makes sure that what he has planted is cared for. And Father, we invite you into our space. The good Father is who you are. It's who you are to the core. You care for your children. Always loving, always supporting, always building always protected and father we're grateful to be called your children send your word tonight send your word to your children send a morsel of bread to your children send us fresh water and fresh wind help us now we will give you the glory lord Come on, he's a good father. Let's clap our hands, a good daddy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, singers. God bless you. And to everyone else before we sit, let's fellowship for a moment. And let's welcome each other into the house of the Lord. No one is an individual, all of us are in need of a touch from the Lord and we need each other. Well, just a little monitor for me and I'll be good. You're a good father. Bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We honor you, Jesus. Good daddy. We bless you in the name of the Lord Jesus and we honor you for your goodness. Lord and we bless you for your children we're excited to be in the house of the Lord one more time let us remember Pastor Bridget who uh, lost uh, her and Pete lost uh, a close family member this week we're praying for you Pastor Bridget and for your strength during this time uh, it's never easy when you lose a loved one amen let us also pray for Terrence Jones and Darcia, who he lost his brother this week. And uh, there must be some arrangements made. So let us show love to the Joneses uh, as well. Let us remember the Cameron family. Uh, Richard Cameron has gone on to be with the Lord and it looks like there are funeral arrangements. And that will be next Friday, the 12th. Viewing is at 10, services will be held at 11 at Greater Faith Weaver Avenue in Melbourne right off of University Boulevard. And so please, if you can, let's show support to the Cameron family, uh, to his children. Let's make sure that we support them during this time. Again, the funeral services will be April the 12th at uh, 10 a.m. the viewing and then at 11 a.m. the services will commence. That's Friday the 12th of April. As we transition into a time of sharing, let us remember that this is a weekend where we are celebrating 29 years of ministry here at the church. I am so happy, grateful to be called your pastor and uh, I love you all. My wife, uh, Pastor Serena loves you and this great team, Elder Hubbard, uh, and uh, Tony Gardner, Elder Gardner, and all of the leaders here at the church, as well as Elder Brown and those who are standing with us. We appreciate all of you. If your name isn't called, it doesn't mean you're not vital. Uh, this is not a name called in church. We don't have everybody's name on a bulletin every week. We do what we do as unto the Lord. He will repay, believe me. What you do in secret for God will be rewarded openly if you just do it as unto the Lord. 
and God will bless you for it. I do believe that we should acknowledge those who are on the front lines and let's continue to build each other up. I'm ready to teach tonight and I pray that you're ready to hear from the Lord. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 through uh, 10, the King James and then we'll read the same verses 9 and 10, 1 Corinthians <coughs> chapter 2 verses 9 and 10 in the New Living Translation. In a moment it'll be on the screen, it looks like it's there. Verse 9 reads like this, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9, but as it is written, I had not seen nor ear heard, neither has have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. And then the New Living Translation reads like this, that is, what the scripture means when it says, or when they say, no eye hath seen, no ear hath heard, New Living Translation, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. But it was to us that God revealed these things by his spirit, for the spirit searches everything and shows us God's deep secrets and shows us God's deep secrets. And one of the secrets of God that I believe he wants me to unveil as we deal with a series called Preparation, there's a rise in the seer's anointing and I'll be dealing with that tonight from the subject, the seer's anointing. Glory to God. Father, I give you praise for that anointing and for the rise of the seer. Let me speak, Lord, with the tongue of the learned even now not just prophetically, but thank you, Father, for an insight that's coming to your people. We can't achieve it if we can't see it. I pray that the eyes of our mind would be enlightened, that we would know what is the hope of the call of God. And Father, I thank you for a well-balanced seer rising out of the ashes in the name of Jesus. Speaking truth to power and giving insight to the body thank you for that happening as you prepare us for what's coming and let it be so father even in our week anniversary as we celebrate 29 years thank you that the seer would be unveiled in this next season we give you praise for that and honor for that in jesus name amen amen we're talking about the seers anointing no yes no no yes no no eye has seen no ear has heard neither has it said entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for them that love him but yes but yes God has revealed it unto us or unveiled it unto us even by his spirit so what the natural eye can't see the spiritual eye can comprehend through the Holy Ghost even the deep things of God the spirit searches the deeper things Yea, the things, the deep things of God Almighty. And we're grateful for the deep things that God has in store for his people. Write it down. The eyes are the window or the windows of the soul. The windows of the soul are the eye. And so no eye can really, really tap into the soul without a supernatural impartation and so the window of the soul the windows of the soul are our eyeballs in the natural you've heard that expression before and it is often used I believe to describe the deeper connection one feels when looking someone in the eyes and actually if you're going to communicate well there should be some type of eye contact uh, preachers who preach without looking at the people they're preaching to or looking on the floor or looking up in the air or people who sing and uh, they're singing without necessarily speaking or singing to the people of God you're not really worshiping them but there should be some type of connection 
that's made from the person leading songs and the people who are following them. If you're teaching a class, whether that is assimilation or any type of discipleship class and the teacher fails to make a connection with the people or they're so caught up in the spirit that they can't talk while making that connection, most of the words will fall on deaf ears because we must make that connection. The eyes are the windows of the soul and the mind works better when there's an eye connection or an eye contact. Uh, and sometimes many of us who are standing before people lack self-esteem and so we have to dig deep into the spirit. We get caught up in the spirit versus allowing our natural body, our natural uh, presentation or to feel comfortable with yourself long enough that you can share something without feeling like you got to close your eyes and squint real tight and speak in tongues every time you're saying something spiritual. You must make an eye connection. Relax. God will work in your natural self, even the spirit, even when he takes over, he doesn't have to take over totally and speak as if, as it were, everything through your mind. He wants to use your mind as you move forward in the things of God. He wants you to be able to stand at the city hall and stand before those people and pray without speaking in an unknown tongue. Just your natural prayer, because these people don't understand tongues, they don't understand all of that, but to open up a city council meeting in the right way by standing there and praying under God with a voice of triumph and bringing everybody into oneness. He wants you to be able to present at times in a class the spirit of the living God and the revelation of God without getting hyped when you do it. And then if hype needs to come in, let it flow. But you don't have to be hyped every time you think of the things of God. Really, it's an indicator that your self-esteem is not where it needs to be. So you hide behind the veil of spirituality. I believe God wants us to be practical as well as spiritual. In other words, he can use you while you're practical. You don't have to be super spiritual to be used of God. When you're dealing with children, look them in the eye and talk to them naturally. You don't have to shakat, arapapa, listen to me. You don't have, they don't understand that. It don't work. It don't work with spouses. You don't have to do that. Talk to me. You don't have to. You don't have to go spiritual on me. When you pray to God, go spiritual. But when you deal with me, deal with me like you can relate to me. And so remember, eye contact is so important when it comes to that. It is the windows of the soul. But there should be a connection when you're trying to get someone's attention. Microsoft created, I believe, a software program called Windows. The designers felt if people could change their mental concept of seeing, maybe impossibilities could become attainable. And so here comes in the late 90s, um, a software called Windows and it took me a while to understand it. I wasn't raised with computers, I had no clue. But when Windows came out, Windows 95 when it came out because at, before Windows 95, people had to be real deep and no DOS and talk about things so deep it wasn't even comprehensible. And only engineers could understand how to work computers and they loved it. Ooh, I'm a software engineer. I heard it all of the time. And, and see, you got, you, know, you, you got to connect this and, and give you long explanations of simple things. Windows came along and said, if you just click this window, something will open up. And simplified it because they had a vision. They wanted to see every household with a personal computer. They simplified it, even in church. I used to know uh, and have these meetings with people that wanted to come in and like, I'm the only one that can do this. I'm the only one that can set this up. I'm the only one that can set that up. And really what happens is when you're the only one that can do it and you don't open it up for others to follow through, we hinder the growth and the expansion of ministry. Amen. That's why Paul said, don't allow your knowledge and your freedom to hinder you or hinder others. But Windows 95, thank God for Microsoft, which opened it up. Actually, I don't have a Microsoft phone. I have an Apple phone. So I thank God for Mac now as well. 
But it, they had a vision to see everybody click on a window and that window would open up files for you. And there would be an operating system that works behind the scenes to take care of the DOS type issues. So all you need to do is learn how to click on these windows so things can open up for you. I believe God has simplified certain things in the kingdom. He doesn't want it to be so complex that only a few people can tap into it. No eye has seen, no ear hath heard. Neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for those who love him. But God saw fit to create a system by his spirit that will open things up where people can see deeper and perceive at another level. Not just based on the preached word, but Holy Ghost can take it and open it up for you. So you can see at a whole nother plane. Am I trying to talk you out of listening to a preacher or talk myself out of a job no uh, how can you hear without the preacher there's some things that just won't open up for you until there's a rabboni in the midst of you that's how he designed it but nobody has a gridlock on what god can show anybody at any given time and those that have a call on their life god is trying to raise up glory to god people who can see through windows and doors People who can peek into the supernatural. Glory to God. Don't get caught up so much with what you see. House numbers and what's in bedrooms. And what's going on in people's personal lives. So you can become powerful. God wants people to enter into their destiny. He wants them to enter into the next phase of what he has for them. And he wants people that he can trust. To be open up to this next dimension called the seers anointing. And I decree that and declare that, that God is working behind the scenes to open up your window. Glory to God. That impossibilities can become attainable. So like windows, the eyes work both ways. Write it down. They're not only important in seeing into another person's soul. Far more vital or important, the eyes are important as we view the world around us. Instead of just looking at individual souls, you do that to make a connection, but God wants us to see the world around us. And there's some hidden things in the world that you won't see just with the naked eye. Amen. You need the Holy Ghost to open you up. I believe sight and vision are very important because they allow us to connect with our surroundings. And the natural is true and it keeps us safe and sound. We don't stumble if we can see. If you can really see it now, you don't stumble as much. And I believe sight and vision helps us to maintain our balance, our sharpness, the sharpness of our minds, our perception. That which is important to the things of God. Leaders cannot be blind. You can't lead if you don't have insight for living. You can't lead. And I believe there's a degree of, of, of insight or a seer's ability that needs to be in all leaders. If you're a parent, it means you're a leader. You need to be able to see. You need to be able to see these demonic spirits and strongholds that are working with our children. That a child can actually show you respect but still be rebellious in their soul. Uh, let me say that again. A child can show and bow before you but inside of them their heart is dark. Many of us see a wayward child and say, man, they need to straighten up. But it's the ones that are cool like that and smooth like that and know how to give you your protocols and your props. And they'll pass right by you because you don't see them act out. And they go right into the next room and everything that they believed in, everything that they're involved in is operating on their phones. And it would actually shock you because you only see the way they greet you and they show you love. But that discerning spirit will show you that there's another shadow that's working with them. There's something following them. I can see a shadow. A shadow is following you as you move into the next dimension. I saw the way you look and I saw something in your eye. And that's not the child that I have. 
As a shepherd, I can tell when you're distracted. I can tell when there are things going on. I can't see everything, but I can see a shadow. Glory to God. And I believe God wants to magnify that in the house of the Lord. Those of us that are leading, we need to be able, not suspicion. Now I'm talking about God showing you, giving you insight on things that you would not see unless he opened it up. Sometimes he wants the seer to see a vision or to have a dream. Glory to God. Amen. I was working on Kennedy Space Center, actually Cape Canaveral, and I had this dream that one of my uh, fellow workers had a promotion. They, they, they gave him a promotion. And I went to him and I said, Keith, his name was Keith um, Fields. I said, Keith, uh, a Caucasian brother, I said, listen, my friend, uh, I had a, a, a dream that you uh, were promoted. And I believe you need to put in for this promotion. He's, he had a speech impediment. He said that they, 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 they won't, they, they, they won't, they won't raise me up like that because I have a problem. I said I saw it, man. Just put in. Guess what? He put in. They were the first ones. He was the first selection because they looked past his speech impediment and saw his heart. And he got that promotion. A year later, I had another dream about the man. And I said, I saw you with another promotion. He said, what, 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 what you talk, talk, talking about? They just promoted me. I said, put in. I saw it. Guess what? He put in for it. They selected him. Now he's a lieutenant. Whoa, whoa, he's a lieutenant. And guess what? When he became lieutenant, he lost that inability to speak. In other words, his speech corrected. All he needed was just somebody to believe in him. And all of a sudden, he wasn't miserable anymore or standing before people didn't know what to say and hiding behind that. He was able to speak and articulate. And he was tall, about six foot four. And he came into his own. Then the Holy Ghost said, go to him again in a year from that and said, you're going to see people lose their job. But if you stick close to God, you'll be the one standing. And right after that, they start laying off supervisors. But he's still working in that job. I'm not saying that the boast. I'm just simply saying God wants to open up your mind that when you speak, you will speak with surety and know that God is behind you. I wasn't trying to give this man any props, but he showed me his elevation. And God wants to show you the elevation of his people. And they need to let some of the frogs go and the pestilence go and the canker worm go. That's eating up their flock, glory to God, and their harvest so God can raise them up to be what he wants them to be. Some of you right now are stumbling at, at the ability, stumbling at your public presentation. But God will shift it if someone can speak into your destiny. And once you stand here, you need to be able to lift people up. You never let the seer's anointing come so you can push people down. You want to lift up God's people. They've already been put down in their lives. They need to be lifted up. Just like Jesus, he said, if I am lifted up. I will draw all men unto me. And if you are lifted up and you got the right heart, you won't just sit there with pride. You'll pull people back to God. I believe it. I believe in you. I believe that you're ready for the seer's anointing. And Holy Ghost told me that he's about to release it. Don't be afraid of it. Yo, 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 speech, 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 speech impediment. And your lack of standing before people, he's going to fix that too. What you want to do is say, yea, Lord, whatever you lead, I will follow. Isaiah 6, who will go for us? Who will stand in the holy place? Isaiah said, here am I, Lord. Send me. I'll go. Yes, I got problems. I had an Uzziah in my life. I'm filthy and my mouth isn't right. But if you purify me and put your spirit in me, I'll go and do what you have me to do. Glory to God. I need to hear some. Here am I, Lord. Send me. Glory to God. That's what you should be saying in your spirit. Here am I. Whatever you want to do in me, I'm willing to do it. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And so write it down. Vision is vital for kingdom living. Now we're moving beyond natural sight. You need vision. If you're going to, uh, if you're going to live, uh, have a vibrant life, in the kingdom of God. 
Write it down. There's an innate power in vision. An innate power in vision. The power that's innate in vision refers, I believe, to the determination and the motivation of pursuing a heavenly revelation and a spiritual fortitude of making that thing that has been veiled truth and a reality. I'll say it again. The power of vision really refers to a determination and a motivation. The power of vision is tied to, it refers to a determination and a motivation of pursuing heavenly revelation. I got to pursue something that I can't see in the natural. It's a business idea. It's something that he put in me. It's something that I see spiritually, but I haven't seen it manifest yet. But I'm determined and I'm motivated to pursue it. So the power of vision refers to the determination and the motivation of pursuing heavenly revelation. And the spiritual fortitude that it will take to make what you saw in vision form a reality in your life. Glory to God. That is to draw down what you saw in spirit and make it become a reality in the earth. Glory to God. Now vision is fragile and that's why you got to watch it because you can't tell your vision to people who are a dream killers. They, they hear about your dream, the first thing they want, ah, oh, you, you ain't ready for that. Uh, and, and try to kill it. Uh, to try to kill it. And it is fragile. It's like an embryo. You can kill it and abort it real quick before it takes root. And, and that's what happens when, when the egg is fertilized. It lodges. Glory to God. And you got to protect it. That's why it has a womb that is inside of. A woe man. Man with womb. No, nothing. Nobody else has been made like her. Because she's supposed to cover and protect that seed. Until it takes root and begins to grow in the uterus. So we got to make sure we protect it. In the uterus of your spirit, you got to protect what God has put in you and you got to watch it. Sometimes you can't tell everybody because the first thing they want to do is hit you in the belly so you would abort it. But the devil is a liar. I come against his bludgeons in the name of Jesus. His verbal bludgeons. His brutal di uh, uh, dictates. His words that will harm what's inside of you. And I decree and declare the Holy Ghost is inoculating you while carrying the vision in the name of Jesus. And you will be smart about it and prudent about it and only talk up when God has put something on the inside of you. Everybody can't handle vision glory to God and that's why you need to be very strategic to watch what you do if you're Facebook prophet and tell everybody so you can get likes everybody what God is saying to you these people don't care about that all they do is copy and paste you got to get into a solitary place and protect your matrix so God can birth something on the inside of you glory to God and so this is an innate power in vision and God wants you to know that when he shows you something you need to be determined and motivated to bring into existence or into the earth that which has been established in heaven I believe Jesus taught his disciples powerful when you pray you should pray our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name holy is thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven God is trying to download into the earth things that are already established in heaven and he's using seers uh, he's using seers to speak what he's already established in heaven he's trying to use the seer to speak it in the earth glory to God and to release it in the earth realm and then have the determination and the motivation to see it come to pass everybody can talk about what they see but who's determined and motivated to make sure it becomes a reality 
That means you can't just say it when you feel it and then we don't see you for six months. You got to be on the job. You got to work hard for your money. You got to work hard for it, honey. You got to stay on the scene. You got to make sure you're on it. You're consistent. You're persistent until God brings it to pass. I got a whole lot of people like the seed of vision, but they've never walked with something until they see the harvest of vision. Glory to God. Surely there is an end to my struggle and my pain, but your expectation will not be denied. And that's what the enemy is trying to do is kill your hope before you begin to see it materialize, to hit you with his best shot, bend you over, and you'll never believe God. But I'm talking to a few people tonight, and I'm trying to calm down. But I'm talking to a few people tonight that I believe God wants to elevate to the seer's level. Come on, pull that thing down out of heaven. Pull it out of the supernatural and let it manifest as it relates to your business, as it relates to your future, as it relates to your family, let, and this ministry. Let God be God and every man a liar. Devil can't hinder it if you can get the vision in you. It's so powerful, you got to go with it. Glory to God. Write it down. Vision must be fueled. Dreams must be fueled by passion to get it done. There's a lot of people, they love to see it, but they don't have the fortitude to work with it until it manifests. Glory to God. The dream must be fueled by passion. There are four things needed if you're going to build anything for the Lord. Those at Shinar decided to build a tower into the heavens. They were so successful at it that God came down himself. He says, nothing is impossible for these people. They can do it. They had a vision and they put several things in place. And because they had these four things in place, it was possible for them to put it, to build a tower into the heavens. So he scattered them by confusing them and giving them multiple languages. That's uh, Genesis chapter 11. You may want to read that. And the four things that they had in place is number one purpose. That is the reason or intent for doing something. That means they decided to build a tower. They knew the reason they wanted to do it. The reason or intent for doing it, they had a purpose. They didn't try to build five towers and a lower one. They wanted to build one. That's the purpose. We're not here to build the Taj Mahal, just a tower. That's what happens with vision a lot of times. When a visionary gets it, people want, oh, I had a dream about doing this. I got a helps community initiative. Oh, I wanted my own nonprofit. Well, why don't you just work with ours? I, I got a vision for my own. Okay, but you don't have resources. You don't have a building. You don't have any resources to do it. You don't even have a vision. You just have an idea. We're already working with it. Can you work with ours? Amen. Well, how did you do it? And we still don't have a tower built yet because people have a problem with finding the purpose and aligning themselves with it. We just duplicate, duplicate, replicate, replicate somebody else's stuff. If you want to be an original, God will make you one, a designer's original, but it's according to his will. Everybody's not supposed to start a church. Some people are supposed to assume one after it started. Because everybody is not an apostle. So you can say all day, I see myself doing that. But if resources don't come, when you try to do that, you're not the one that started. You got to know what God has called you to do. And be okay with it. It doesn't make you lesser. He chose the parts of the body that he wants to magnify. So if he made you an arm, be okay with swinging that arm and giving God praise and picking up some trash and putting it in your pocket, pulling out some bills and waving your hands in the air that you just don't care and strengthening your serve. But if he made you the spine, I need you to sit up straight. Nobody's going to see you, but we can tell if you're crooked. Yeah, you got to get that body straight now. If you're the spine, all nerve endings come through you. you. We can't have a broke back if you're the spine of the body. Glory to God. What if you're the legs? You're going to transport the vision. Glory to God. Nobody says thank you for legs until they broke. 
But you got to know what God has called you to do. You are to transport the vision. What if you're the heartbeat? What if you're the heartbeat of the ministry? In other words, if you're not, there ain't no flow. Everybody don't praise the heart. They only think about it when it starts clogging up. God, help me, Jesus. Glory to God. What if you're the mouthpiece? You better speak. You can't say I can't speak if you're the mouthpiece. Nothing gets done in the kingdom unless his voice activated. And if he made you the tongue of the learned, you need to speak it. Do it with tact, but speak the word of God. Nothing moves until we speak. So move or get out the way. Get out the way. Get out the way. Move or get out my way. Oh my God, help me, Jesus. So we need the word of the Lord. Whatever part of the body he puts you in, be okay with that and work with it. Yes. Glory to God. We need you. God is adding to the church daily, such as to be saved. There are people coming in and they, they're supposed to supply something. If you cut them short, you'll never see the supply. Amen. He sent them there, sent them here to supply something to the body. And we got to let them grow in that place. Glory to God. So dreams are fueled by passion. Number one, purpose if you want to build a thing. Number two, you need uni, unity. Unity. Unity is shown at Shinar in Genesis 11 by all of them speaking the same language and aligning themselves with the purpose. So if I'm speaking English and you're going to work with me in a business, don't come talking about Swahili. If I'm the leader, you got to speak my language when you deal with my organization. If you don't know it, you better go and get some type of uh, uh, Zaretta Stones. Uh, what is it? Rosetta Stone. That's right. Or babble and start babbling until you can speak it. One thing I loved about Honduras when I went there, everybody was Spanish. Most of the people there were Spanish. I saw Afri African looking Spanish folk and I saw very high, high complexion folk that were Spanish in there and everybody was holding hands. And when they said the word yes, it's in the whole island, it's C. Si. That's what yes means in Spanish, C. Si. So when you, I, I, I didn't know much, but I could hear C, C, C. It means yes. Everybody saying it wasn't no Ebonics. Oh, we want to change it. You know, I, I'm not going to say see. You, see, it's really enlighten. Enlighten means see. Well, who, do, who says so? In America, we got all of this other stuff, sub-languages, and everybody don't want to speak the king's language, and they bring in their own style. Right now, uh, everybody's learning some type of sub-language and won't speak the king's language. But this is how you do it. If you join a company and the person is speaking English and you want to be successful, you got to learn how to communicate in the style in which the leader is communicating. You don't have to dress like them, but you got to communicate at that level. If you join a church, you don't bring in your language. You got to learn the languages of the house and start echoing what you see. That's how you move things. Not trying to change it, make it worldly, or trying to water it down so people will feel comfortable. I was preaching in our early years of ministry and a man came up to me and said, I don't think you should wear a jacket uh, because some people come here and they don't have jackets. I said, what are you talking about, man? So you're trying, in your philosophy, you think that I should take away my conviction as the leader so you would feel comfortable. We're not flaunting clothes, but this is me. I present me to you. I can't water it down so you can feel comfortable. So if I speak the king's English and I don't, I don't have triple negatives, I ain't got no nothing. You want me to speak Ebonics so you would feel comfortable? Or do you want me to speak at the level that God has given me as the leader? I'm supposed to water it down so you won't feel like you need to stretch for the stars? What are you talking? Who can, what are you talking about, man? This is what I'm trying to say. We shouldn't lower the standards so people will feel comfortable. God want to raise people up. And that's where we need to be. Purpose and unity. Speak the same language. The third thing that those in Shinar had was effective communication. Effective communication, which means when one is speaking, the others are listening. 
Many people are thinking about what they want to say when you're talking. They're not listening. As soon as you finish, they cut right in. Or they take a conversation in a whole nother direction. If you have that tendency, you need to watch it. You will never be effective if you're going to build a tower. You must get with it. In other words, if you come into a situation and groups of people are talking, first thing you do is not come, hey, everybody, hey, 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 and take over the conversation. You listen to what's going on and identify with what's being said. It will relax everybody, and in due season, you'll be able to put your input in, even if you're the leader. It's called effective communication, listening before speaking. It's egocentric to shift the conversation every time. It's self-centered to shift the conversation. Wisdom say be slow to speak, quick to hear, and slow to get angry. Well, I'm preaching to myself tonight. I said slow to speak, slow to speak. Take your time before speaking, but quick to hear. Let me hear your audible. How well is your audible developed? Do you listen before speaking? If you're going to build a tower now, we need effective communication effective that means we're speaking the same language but we're listening before we speaking glory to God one of the things that I believe God has elevated me in is the ability to hear and that is to hear before I speak I'm gonna listen to what you're saying and try to understand you sometimes it's to not because people they just like to take over but that's all right you're not a takeover I hear you I see you I'm watching you. but you need to listen before you speak hear a person out glory to God it requires a whole lot more abilities uh, to hear and patience to listen to people because if they don't make sense in the first 30 seconds some of us shut them down I'm tired of that, tired of that. but you got to listen sometimes it's taken me uh, maybe 50 minutes before I see a person's heart well if you say well what's up you want to be a seer let me tell you about one. Paul is in Philippi. A slave girl is dancing around him. And he didn't discern it until three days. It took him three days to see what's up with this. The Bible says then he became vexed in his spirit. And he saw then this is a spirit of divination. But he had to be patient for three days before God made it clear. He could have destroyed her if he didn't know what he was dealing with. She already been used by men. She didn't need another one to misinterpret what was going on. Amen. Oh my God, help me Jesus. And just by waiting on the Lord, dealing with his aggravation, God opened him up to see. This is a spirit of divination. She's saying the right things, but she's controlled by another spirit. You can't pick that up all the time instantaneously. Wait on the Lord. Let him show you. And then once he moved, glory to God, the spirit had no more jurisdiction in her life and he had to let her go. And that girl became different from that moment on. That girl had to let go of the people who were using her because she could see herself that some kind of way God loved her in Philippi and he sent the man of God all the way to that city to set her free. She probably became one of the greatest disciples you could ever imagine after being controlled like that and then God opened it up for your deliverance. I know she tied close to the things of God. She was used to being controlled. But now God opened her up where she wanted to be connected with the word of God. Glory to God. And some of us are very close to getting some people set free if we would just listen. Not speak, listen first. So purpose, unity, and then effective communication. Here's the last one, and that's passion. It's passion, or the fuel. I believe I said it is the fuel for your vision. Passion is the fuel. Your dream needs fuel, and it is passion, the heat, the flame of passion to get it done. If we play music, we have passion. If we sing, we have passion. If we preach, we have passion. If we're teaching a, a class on grief share, there's passion to go with it. 
It doesn't mean you have to be as passionate as I am, but it should be something in you that makes the people know that you believe in what you're saying. Glory to God. That's the fire of the dream. And God will fuel it. Can somebody say amen? amen. So purpose, unity, effective communication, and a fire of desire or passion to get it done, to take it to completion. Don't let the flame of passion go out. And we got some fire extinguishers in the church and in the community. Fire, somebody can be on fire. We, ah, ah. They love the ministry, but you, ah, you don't, I don't take all of that. Child, bye. <laughs> listen, listen. Get yourself together. We need a lot of fire starters, not fire extinguishers. Glory to God. The wood is dry. Everything is ready. We need a fire starter. Not fire extinguishers. Thank you, Lord. I believe passion acts as a driving force to get it done. It's one of the things that I really believe. Pastor Sabina told me the other day, she, I've never seen anybody as passionate as you are to get up and do what you do like uh, don't stop until you get enough I don't move fast but when I believe in something I'm going to stick with it how many of you have that same passion good there are people that are watching I want you to like and share you need to develop the passion to get things done it doesn't matter how, how many setbacks you have or how many people try to discourage you turn your ear off of discouragement I don't allow discouragement to get in my inner ear it comes to my outer ear but I will not give you access to the drum. You're not going to turn my beat. You're not going to turn my flow. It's not going to happen. I need to hear from God. Once I hear from God, I turn off my drum to you. You're not going to change my rhythm or my flow. I'm going to stick with it until it's done. Thank you, Lord. Our team came to me, Bishop, you want to continue with this particular project? I said, we started it. We need to take it to completion. That's me. Now, if it starts to fail and we have no oxygen, we can make a difference. But we see some movement and some increase and we want to stick with it. When I put my name on it, I'm going to stick with it. And that's what you need to start developing when you, when you put your name on something. If we count you, can we count on you to get it done? Glory to God. Write it down. Revisit the vision. Revisit the vision. Well, what does this got to do with seeing? Because God gives vision. Revisit it. Revisit it. Revisit the vision that he gave you. Well, I can't see now. Well, revisit what he already said. Proverbs 29 and 18. Amplified. Where there is no vision. No redemptive revelation of God. The people perish. But he who keeps the law of God, which includes that of man, blessed or happy, fortunate, and whew, invalu invalu invaluable is he. So where there is no vision of people perish. That means vision is more important than people. Because without vision, they perish. Vision is more important. Vision is like oxygen to people. In other words, I don't care how wonderful you are, if we cut off oxygen, you're going to perish. So oxygen is more important to you than you realize. And vision is more important to spiritual people than we realize. Without it, we perish, according to the scripture. Write it down. It can be personal, but it's never private. It should be held in a private set while it's in its embryonic stage. But it's never supposed to be your private vision. It can be personal, but not private. You should share it with someone that you can trust. I say share up. People who are, are, maybe have a greater capacity. Joseph shared it with his brothers and they hated him. You're not, not supposed to be doing lateral stuff. Everybody can't handle your vision. 
They hated him for sharing his vision. It's more important than your spiritual expansion, than your physical mobility. Vision is more important than your spiritual expansion or your physical mobility, your ability to move and shift and change or work. Because where there is no vision, it affects the people. Scripture says they cast off restraint. They perish. They pine away. A family pines, slowly dies when there is no vision. It affects the people like a cancer when there's no vision. Glory to God. Where there's no oracle, where there's no visionary, where there's no prophetic voice, I hope you're writing this down, where there is no revealer of the mind of God, where there's no one coming directly out of the scriptures, when there's no destiny shaper, where there's no teacher, no teaching priest. When there's no spirit of the Rabboni or the Rabboni anointing. When there is no seer. When there is no pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night revealing the path. When there is no one who knows the face of the son of God or the face of the supernova when there is no voice of distinction when there is no wise master builders anointing according to the pattern that's revealed the people perish but he who keeps the law it is the vision that keeps people connected with the law of God he who keeps the law gains a unique ability to see beyond physical limitations. To see beyond physical impediments. That's why it's important to nurture vision. The seer must speak. The seer can't just see and then be dumb as it relates to releasing the tongue. The seer must see and speak. Just be wise in who you speak to. But you must release it because word power creates portals in the atmosphere. If I didn't speak what God has given me, then the portal for the release of the seer's anointing would be held up. Now God is going to have get the glory. He's going to do what he does. But it's when you speak that portals open. 1 Samuel chapter 3. 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 1 and 2. Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. The word of the Lord was, was rare or precious in those days. There was no frequent or open widely spread vision. Now this is a bad situation to be in. You got the priest in this spot. You got the tabernacle. You got people serving, but there is no widespread open vision in the arena or in the, in the atmosphere. Let's say in the territory. God had a plan though. The boy Samuel is ministering and he's about to do something unique to Israel. He's ministering to the Lord before his mentor. If you check him out, the scripture said he was blind and he was obese. Look at that, not just in the natural. That means he lost vision and passion. And he became fat by always eating the word, but not exercising it. He can sit there and say, good message. Oh, I got a revelation, but he can't see. It's locked up in the man and he's getting fat on the wine and fat on the bread and the meat of God, but it doesn't pass. It's not released. 
He's a dumb dog. My God. That's why God has to raise up a child. Or someone that hadn't been trained. Or someone that is not limited. Someone that's open. Oh my God. Someone that's open to new things. Someone that's not confound or confined to religion. Or to traditions of men. Someone that wasn't raised in the church. Someone that's got something that they're dealing with. And they still deal with it and they got to pass. Don't, don't get me wrong. God has people in the word and in the scripture that never went in the streets. And I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about Samuel. He's young, but it represents people who never were trained. Glory to God. And God says, I got something that I want to do in the young lad. That's going to change the course and the trajectory of the whole nation. Because his mentor will not speak. He can see it right there and won't say nothing about it. He can see his own children not living for God and he'll look over it. He watches his own sons do what's wrong but he babies them. Don't want them to be a chastised. Don't you say nothing to my children. And you baby them. You baby them versus putting them in a way where they can be corrected. You see them exchanging favors, even sexual favors, to get into the tabernacle. And you won't say a word. You're blocking a whole generation from coming to God. And he's Samuel's mentor. God says, I got to break it up. Let Samuel be like his leader. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight, look at it, verse 2, had dimmed. So that he could not see. He was lying down. In his own place. In his own place. His own little neat. Havoc. His own spot that he became comfortable in. He's not standing. He's not moving. He's lying down. In his own. Space. Oh my God. In the chapter before, he speaks to Samuel's mother and unlocks her womb. But in chapter 3, they give you a revelation. Somehow or another, he sinks into a deep spot. And he can't see. And now that what he speaks, he's lying down while on the job. How many of us are lying down? God is giving revelation. But you're either ashamed or you don't want to step on toes versus stepping into what he called you to be in. Oh my God, help me Jesus. You created your own space, your own silo. Nobody can get in it and nobody's coming out of it. Because you don't trust nobody. The seer has to be able to trust the Lord and release the word of the Lord to build up the people of God. Glory to God. And I can go on with that, but I'm not here to preach Samuel tonight. But there's some powerful revelation in that. Because Samuel could hear God. Scripture says the Lord called on to the lad, but the Bible says he didn't know his voice. And he thought his leader was calling him. So he goes in and says, Sir, Lord, did you call me? No, lay down. I didn't call you. And the voice of the Lord came again. And called unto Samuel. And he goes back to Eli. Did you call me sir? No I didn't call you. Go back and lay down. Which represents that he could hear the voice. But he didn't know it. That means he needed somebody to tweak it. Don't count Eli out yet. Because he's about to open the lad up. Some of you because the leader is fat. And has lost their vision. You feel like they have no more use. But you got to wait on the Lord. The third time he comes and says, did you call me? And the scripture says that Eli perceived, my God, that the Lord was calling the lad. And whether you like it or not, young people, God, you may feel like leaders don't know you. But they know something about God that can help align you with the will of God. 
and you got to learn how to stay there in that transitional zone until God passes the baton to you. You don't leave it because you frustrate it. You stay right in the cut until God releases the baton to you and he's not going to release it until you're ready. Samuel is in the transitional zone and Eli gave him what he needed to open him up. The portal now is open. What I want you to say the next time you hear this voice is that your servant hears you. Good God from Zion. Why did he use those terms? Because at one time Eli could hear his voice. He knew the ways of God. He just slipped out of his place. And it's dangerous to know and then slip and can't hear. It's more dangerous to, to, to go through that than to ever never to not know God at all than to be in a place where you can hear him but he doesn't speak to you anymore. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He never heard the voice of the Lord since then. God moved from speaking into Eli's ear and began to speak to, to Samuel about the destiny of the nation. And I believe if we don't become what God wants us to be, we may never get this chance again. We've got to move with God now. This is the time. Move with God now. In the 29th year of the reign of this ministry, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to us on the 3rd of April, 2024, and said, now is the time. Things are shifting and changing and the seer must rise. Can the church say amen? amen. You got to be on the wall. Somebody's got to be on the wall to speak the will and the word of God to the people of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I believe uh, God is saying something unique here in the passage. And Paul prayed to God for the church of Ephesus that the eyes of their understanding will be enlightened but I believe God wants your eyes to be enlightened like Samuel's eyes were enlightened by God he wants to show you the wonders the man the young man became so powerful when God moved in and the scripture says not one of his words fell to the ground that's what I want the Bible says everything in the scripture was written for our learning. That we through the scriptures might find faith, hope, and love, right? I believe if you see something in the text, you can ask God for it. I want Samuel's ability. That is, when I say something, it don't fall. Glory to God. When I speak it, it, it has to hit its trajectory. When Samuel would come to a part of or territory, everybody there would say, do you come in peace? Yeah. Do you come in peace? Yes, I come in peace. You know why? Because if he says it's going to rain, rain will come out the sky. If he say God is going to deliver you and you're about to step into a time to flourish, you better believe it was going to happen. If he said God wants to shift your life, you better believe shifts and changes started happening. And God can give you that kind of favor. Well, you can unlock dungeons and they'll come out. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. He's so powerful that when Saul had him summons up from the depths, he comes up and says, why do you disturb me out of my rest? The man had favor with God. And I believe God wants to give us that kind of favor. I feel Bishop Weaver in there. That's right. God want to give you favor. Oh my God. I believe that tent revival man, the mantle, is still waiting on somebody. Glory to God to pick up the mantle. God want to use you. Glory, hallelujah. And I want him to use me. That's right. You should be saying in your soul, I'm not going to sit back and pull back on God. You can use me, Lord. You can use me. Watch this, he's got too many investments in you anyway. Do you know he's been watching over you all your life? Just like he watched over Samuel. All of us, think about the loneliness. His mama said, if you give me a child, I'm gonna give him back to you. So she brings him to Eli. And he's sitting there without mama's love, without anybody else. He's sitting there in the dark. What do I do now? And God did it. Like many of us felt all alone. 
separated from your mother's womb because God has something special for you. And you feel alone all the time. Hallelujah. But God is just getting you ready for a moment. Whew, thank you, Jesus. He loves Samuel. Glory to God. And he loves you. I said God loves you. Hallelujah. He loves you. I'm about to close tonight. Hallelujah. Amos chapter 1 verse 11. I'll close with this passage. Behold the days. Amos chapter 8 verse 11. I'm sorry. Amos chapter 8 verse 11. Amplified. Behold the days are coming. Says the Lord. When I will send a famine in the land. Not a famine of bread. Nor thirst for water. I believe we're in this time. A famine for hearing the words of the Lord. And the people shall wander from sea to sea. That means they travel, never satisfied. I got to go here. I got to fly there. I got to go. I got to see this, but never satisfied. They shall travel and wander from sea to sea, from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord. I got to go to this conference. I got to go to that conference. I got to be there. I got to sit in the midst. But you're trying to find something. Inquiring for and requiring it as one requires food. But shall not find it. Let me tell you something about God. You don't have to go from she to see the shiny sea to find the word of the Lord. He can open it up right here. He can open your mind up. Samuel didn't have to run to a distant country or a distant city. Wherever his mama planted him, he stayed faithful. And all of a sudden, the word of the Lord was revealed to him. It is not about where you go. It's about how your heart is set. Glory to God can open up your mind right now. So you can understand revelations. And I'm the prophet to speak to you. To unveil it to you. You need to settle down and say Lord here am I. Send me out. Stop running to find a morsel. When the morsel is right here. And wait I say on the Lord. Glory to God. Again. Again. Proverbs 29 and 19. Servant will not be con corrected by words alone. But though he understands, he will not answer. He will not answer. Though he understands. And so if you think you're going to correct people just by words alone, it's never going to happen. For though he understands, he will not answer. The master who mistreats him. So if you're harsh with your words, you're still not going to get it done. There has to be a seer's anointing to look past that. Sometimes it's little small things that would open a person up. Not just yelling at them until they get it. Y'all follow what I'm saying? The scripture says a servant would not be corrected by words alone. I'm your slave. Get over there. What you doing? When you come into church, that's not going to work. Because they understand what you're saying. Scripture say, but they won't answer. Because you're the master. And they feel like you're mistreating them. Oh, my God. You got to shift. The seer would say, back up off of that. Your approach is not going to get the result that you're looking for. Here's the word of wisdom for you. Ah, help me, Jesus. Seers need to see, and we need interpreters to go along with the seer. And I'm praying that over the next 12 months, God unveils this seer anointing. Ask him for it when you pray. And those he's called, he's going to allow you to see more. He's going to allow you to see more. Glory to God. I hear the word see more. There's going to be a revival, like with see more. A revival is going to kick out. God is not done. Many of those people are dead, but there's a mantle in the earth, in the heavens, that God is about to release. 
Glory to God. Get yourself ready for the mental. God is pulling people out of the dungeons, man. He's going to use them. I hear Seymour, William Seymour. Glory to God. I believe it's Azusa. Amen. Glory to God. I hear Seymour. I said you will see more, but I hear Seymour. God has not forgotten about the move. And just because Carlton Pearson passed away doesn't mean the will of God is finished. There's a mantle that God wants to release upon this generation. And the mere fact that Carlton passed tells me that he's ready to release it on somebody. Thank you, God. I believe the season is right. This is the year. In the year of our Lord, 20. 24 April the 3rd remember what I say God says I want to release the seer's anointing glory to God that the body will be informed about what he wants to do glory to God hallelujah he wants to do something through you and around you he wanted you to see him he wants to meet with you he desires to talk with you and to walk with you and tell you you are his own to give you good things. He's requesting a dance with you. Glory to God. As a father, as a loving father, come here and I grab your hands and pirouette with you and dance with you until you get the rhythm and the flow. Ooh, he gave it to me. He yearns to sing with you. And to cry with you through life's challenges and pains. Glory to God. He wants to be a good father. That's who he is. But he wants to sing with you and to you. Even cry with you. You mean God will cry with me? Yes. Jesus wept. And when his children weep, he weeps. Thank you, Lord. But you must ask him for it. And I want you to start asking him for the ability to see. And the things he's going to show you, not about the world. He's going to show you stuff that's right around you first. Woo, Jesus. I never saw it. It's right here. And then as you begin to deal with things right around, he's going to open you up for the world. That's my word to the people of God. Today in the house of God. He wants to do something through you. He wanted you to see him. He wants you to meet with him. He desires to talk with you even now and give you good things. He's requesting a dance with you. I don't know what that means, but it's for somebody as a father. He yearns to sing with you, to even cry with you through life challenges and changes and difficulties. But you must ask for the seer's anointing. Thank you, Lord. Father, let it be so. As we ask, open us up to see. I thank you for the revelation of truth reveal and truth nation. Bless your people. Synchronize with us. Talk to us. Walk with us. Dance with us. Cry with us. Sing through us. To us. Father, we thank you. Grow us. Take care of us. Help us to see and guide us. In Jesus' name. Amen. I pray a blessing on the people of God tonight. We got some things that we must do. We got some people we need to bury, but God is going to give you strength. Lift up your heads or your gates and be lifted up your everlasting doors. Daisha and T, stand firm. Be strength for everyone else. God is going to give you that ability. Be the strength in the spine in the name of Jesus. 
He's going to give you that ability. I speak sobriety over your lives. Hallelujah. The intoxicated will become sober. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The intoxicated will become sober. Quiet your spirit. In the name of Jesus. God will help you. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I see a sheet coming down, and this sheet is unique. Sheet coming down from the Lord. Not like Peter's sheet that had four-legged beasts. This one has jewels. I see rings and bracelets and necklaces. Hallelujah. I hear the Holy Ghost saying he wants to gift his people. I see resources and treasures coming down from glory. I see the vision, but the vision must be walked out. God is looking for sobriety. It's already yours, but you're not sober. The more sober you are, the more sobriety you'll see in others. And he will gift you according to your sobriety. Hallelujah. Cut the foolishness out and let's move with God. And watch my word even as I speak by the Holy Ghost come to pass. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I feel the Holy Ghost in my forehead and down the back of my legs. And I believe the Lord is going to give you hinds feet. Glory to God. Hinds feet. That's the ability to leap. To go up the hill. Effortlessly. Glory to God. Let it be so. Even now. According to your word father. Hinds feet. As the deer pants for the waters, so does my soul long for thee, O God. For the living God, when shall I come before him? God is releasing strength to climb. Hallelujah. You will not faint as you move forward, as you go higher. You will be able to leap. You will be able to run. You will be able to overcome. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. So lift. So grow. Abound. In the work of the Lord. Run. Take ground. Go for it. He's already paved the way. You can do this. Even by the spirit of God. Let it be so. Glory to God. Strength is coming to Heinz's feet. Thank you, Lord. And it is so. In Jesus' name, clap your hands, all ye people. <laughs> Glory to God. This will be a transformative weekend because God is about to set the course for our future. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And it is so. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you have an offering, I want you to get it right. You can give it as you go. I'm about to release you in the care of the Lord. For those of you that are watching, you can go to the website and give or download the app. I'm not taking a lot of time. We need to walk under the veil here. Let the Holy Ghost rest. He's about to open up the seer to people, specific people that are going to do what was required. That's asked for it. He's going to open you up. You're going to start seeing it. Take a notepad. Write down what you see. And the name of Jesus is already blessed. If you would like to sow a seed. Follow the props that's on the screen. And sow your seed. I'm about to get quiet. And release you into the presence of the Lord. God is speaking to somebody in this room. And somebody in cyber. 
He's trying to push you to the next dimension. Thank you, Lord. I saw a sheet come down from the sky and I see treasures in it. He's waiting on sobriety to release it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And it is so in the name of Jesus. You can text to give. Many ways of giving. You'll see the props. You can download the app and give. You can go to the website and give. Father, thank you for the gifts coming in. I sit and I'm asking you to stand. Supply the need of this church. I thank you for the billion coming here. There's property we need to buy. We need room for our children now. Bring in the sheaves, Lord. I give you glory, praise, and honor. I see the sheet. Thank you for the gifts. Not only financial gifts, but spiritual gifts. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Go in peace, my brothers and sisters. We'll see you this weekend. Prayer Friday night. May God bless and keep you is our prayer. Nehemiah action on the 20th. I'm sorry, the 15th. Of, February, of, of April 15th, the Tuesday, the 15th, Nehemiah Action uh, in Sun Tree United Methodist. Be there at 6.30. God bless you. Amen. We pray you are blessed by the worship experience here at Truth Revealed. Share this word with your friends and loved ones on your news feed and timeline. And remember, there are several ways to partner with us. Text Trim Give to 888 364 4483. Follow the prompts and you will receive a confirmation text of your gift. You can also give online at truthrevealed.org or securely donate using the Truth Revealed mobile app. You can also mail in your gift addressed to Truth Revealed at 1550 Orange Blossom Trail Northeast, Palm Bay, Florida. 32905. Once again, we thank you for your continued generosity to Truth Reveal. And to those who have answered the call to salvation, please email connect at truthreveal.org. And until the next time, remember to share this message and stay connected via Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Trim Nation One. May God bless you and keep you until our next gathering.